making your own ESP32 S3 dev board sounds pretty complicated, but it's actually surprisingly easy. In this video, I'll show you step by step how to build one from scratch with just a handful of components, and by the end, you'll see that you can really make your own professional looking development board. Now, our first port of call is obviously the datasheet. Page 42 of this document gives us exactly what we need. It tells you how to wire up the ESP32 S3 module. Now, we can actually simplify this quite a bit. Firstly, unless you need very accurate timing during deep sleep, you don't need the external crystal. So that's already simplified the schematic quite a bit. Now, for a dev board, we'll generally be connecting directly to USB. Now, the really nice thing about the S3 is that it has native USB support. You can upload firmware over USB, you can run serial over USB, you can even debug over USB. So we just need to connect pins 19 and 20 straight to the USB data lines. This also means we don't have to have these additional connectors. We are going to break these pins out anyway, because we are making a dev board, but you don't need extra connectors. Finally, since we are making a dev board, and we do probably want to upload firmware quite often, we'll replace this jumper on IO0, which is the boot pin, with a switch. This will let us easily get into firmware upload mode if our board is misbehaving. So our only remaining question is how to get 3.3 volts to power the module. If you look on a lot of other dev boards, you'll see the venerable AMS117 voltage regulator. The downside of this component choice is that it should really use tantalum capacitors. There are many, many other options, but the LD117 is a drop-in replacement and it's more than happy with ceramic capacitors. So let's jump over to KiCad and get the schematic going, and then we'll lay out the PCB. Okay, so over in KiCad, I've uh, brought in all the components and I've um, saved you the trouble of watching me wire them all up. I've done all the wiring already. So we have our ESP32 S3 room module here. Um, here we have the LD117 voltage regulator. So we've got a decoupling capacitor coming in for the 5 volts and we have the decoupling capacitors on the output. So one for the voltage regulator and the two capacitors as requested in the data sheet for the ESP32 S3. Um, down here we have our USB connector. So we have the data lines connected up. So there's two of those, a positive one and two and a negative one and two as well. And the CC lines, so CC1 and CC2, are both pulled down using a 5.1K resistor to ground. So that tells whatever we're plugged into that we'd like to receive some power. I've added on some um, LED indicators. You can't have too many LEDs on any project. So we have one connected directly to 5 volts to tell us that we actually have 5 volts coming in. One connected to 3V3, so we know that the voltage regulator is actually working. And another one connected to a GPIO pin, so we can do a blink sketch to make, make sure our board is actually working. We have our two switches here, so we have one for the boot pin, so this switch will pull boot down to ground. And we have another one here for the EN pin, so we have the RC circuit for the EN pin. So the purpose of this is um, when power is applied, you want some time for the voltage to stabilise. So this is an RC circuit connected to the EM pin. This will rise slightly more slowly than the 3.3 volt line and the chip will boot up once the voltage is stabilised. And there's a switch here that pulls this capacitor down to ground and that causes the IC to reboot. Uh, we also have our connectors here. This is a dev board, so we do want to break out all of the pins. So I've got a 20 pin connector here and another 20 pin connector here. And what I've done is I've used my nice um, guide to which pins you can use to work out where to actually place the pins. So hopefully when we come to lay out the PCB, I've lined these up so that we have the left and the right easily routable. Now you may not want to route all of these pins out. Some of them you really shouldn't use on your dev board, on your, on your breadboard. So things like D minus and D plus, perhaps if you're using USB, you don't want to actually use those for anything. And there's other pins where you want to be careful about using them, but I've just decided to break everything out. Um, so that's it for this schematic, really. Uh, you can get the symbols and the footprints and nice 3D models from the Expressive KiCad library. So I'll put a link to this down in the description. It's got all the instructions for installation. It's pretty straightforward, but it's got all of the modules you can possibly think of. 
and the nice PCAD symbols, all from the official expressive people. Um, the other thing I've done for a few symbols is use this Easy EDA to KeyCAD. It's a really nice tool that you can point at LCSC and it will pull down the symbol and the footprint and the 3D model. So I've done a video on that previously. Have a look at that. It's quite a cool um, application. Definitely worth supporting. So that's our schematic. If we jump over to the PCB, then I've done a bit of organization already. So here's, our, here's what our dev board will look like. Um, I've arranged things um, in a fairly logical way. So here's all of our um, LEDs that will light up and show us stuff. I might reorganize these so the LEDs are all lined up nicely. So D1 is uh, next to D2. Uh, we've got the ENLRC circuit and our decoupling capacitors for the 3.3 volt line and a decoupling capacitor for the 5 volt line. Here's our two switches and here's the 5.1K resistors that will connect to the USB. I've tried to leave a reasonable amount of space here for the USB connector because we really want to be able to inspect this and get in with our soldering iron and if the components are in the way here that can be quite difficult. So our next job is to wire all of this up. I have set up some net classes. If you look over here I have a power net class and I've made that slightly thicker than the default width. So looking here I've done for power I've done a track width of 0.4 millimeter and the default is 0.2 millimeters. And I've just assigned um, 3v3 and 5 volts to that net class. Um, what I'll do is I'll wire up the USB connectors first, so D minus and D plus, get them connected. I'll then do the um, power line, so I'll do the 3 volt line and the 5 volt line. And then I'll probably do the EN um, pin, because that needs to come down here. And then it's just a case of routing all of these pins out to these pin headers. Uh, we can have a quick look at what this might look like when it's finished. So the 3D viewer. So here we go. This is what we should end up with once it's been manufactured and we've soldered everything on. Now there is one thing to remember. So this does look quite wide. Lots of people get a dev module and then they say, oh, it doesn't fit on my breadboard. But what you can do is plug breadboards together. So you can get very wide breadboards, which then fit these very wide components. So I've not tried to make this really, really thin. I've not kind of crammed these pins right up against here. We probably could make it a bit thinner if we wanted to, but it's a bit too much work. So I'm going to crack on and root all of this, and uh, I'll see you when it's finished. So that's everything rooted up. That was actually kind of fun. Um, quite uh, quite relaxing doing PCB layout, I find. So we have a ground plane. So if I turn on this, we can see our nice ground plane. That hooks up all of the ground. We've got lots of veers to stitch that together. Uh, we've got quite a nice routing for the USB signal. That's this nice pair of cables going here. And we have reasonably thick traces for all the power. So that's pretty good. Done some silt screen, so we've got all the pins labelled and the buttons labelled as well. Let's have a quick look at the 3D view and see what it's going to look like. So that's not bad at all. I think I quite like that. That's, uh, that's pretty good. 
So let's get this um, packaged up and sent off to PCBWay for assembly. So we just go File, Fabrication Outputs, generate our Gerber files. So let's put it in a folder. So I'll stick it in this Gerbers folder. Uh, yes, we want to do that. So plot all the Gerbers, generate the drill file, so it's the same directory. So generate that. That's our work done. So I just need to zip that folder up and we're good. Okay, that's our folder nicely zipped up. And then we just pop over to PCB Wait and we can upload that Gerber file. Okay, so we select our zip file, open it up, that will upload. Should read all the parameters for us. Um, we'll do a single piece. We need five boards. We'll just do five, don't need more than that. Uh, we'll keep the thickness at default. Um, let's do it in black. That'll look quite nice, I think. So it's still $5, even if we ask for black. Silk screen is going to be white. We're not doing UV color printing. Uh, everything else we can leave as is. And we're going to specify our product location. So for that, we just do uh, way, way, way. And you'll see on the PCB, then I've done that just underneath the, the IC. So let's, um, let's send that off, save it to cart. Uh, we ship them to the United Kingdom, and I've already got some stuff in my basket, so let's agree to that. So we've got two items in our basket, five dollars each, and we'll do the shipping when we actually check out. So should be good. We'll see you in the next video if I've actually done it right.